Hello everyone. No matter where you're watching from today, whether at home, on a bus, or in the jungle, we are all here to worship Jesus and draw closer to him. That's one of the wonders of today's worship experience. We can join with people across the world and across time in turning our lives over to Jesus. Because that's what we're here to do today. We're here to say to Jesus, I am yours. Help me to know the truth of that statement and help me to act like it. Today, Jeff is bringing us a new music set. If you can, I encourage you to sing along and see how that affects your heart. If you're on the bus, maybe you want to sing quietly. Or not, that's up to you. Then Stephanie will have our announcements and updates before I come back with today's sermon on equipping God's people. As you listen, I want you to lean in and see how the Holy Spirit will lead you over the next 45 minutes or so. Try to still your thoughts so you can hear the voice of God. And when he speaks, I want you to step into whatever he is calling you to do today. And with all that said, let's dive in. Hello there, and happy Thanksgiving. My name is Jeff, and I always count it such a privilege to get to spend a few moments with you, worshiping and glorifying our great and marvelous Heavenly Father. You know, people often ask, how do I know what God's will for me is? Well, Scripture has a lot to say about God's will for you and for me, and I just want to draw attention to some words that Paul gave to the church in Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we find Paul encouraging the church to always be joyful, to always be praying, and to always be giving thanks. Thanks to the Father, for this is His will for us in Christ Jesus. Well, let's take those words to heart as we spend these next moments in worship together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me, oh. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now, I'll give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good 
With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Well, as we continue to express our worship to God in thanksgiving, listen to these words from Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. And praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. He sent his son to die and rise again to save us. His never-ending love is steadfast and sure. He's broken our chains and given us freedom. Give thanks to God, for He is good. In Him we are alive and have joy everlasting. His never-ending love is steadfast and sure. He casts out all fear and fills us with courage. Give thanks to God, for He is good. When storms come and rage, His peace overwhelms us. His never-ending love is steadfast and sure the lord is our refuge when trouble surrounds us give thanks to god for he is good give thanks to god for he is good He's always pouring out His abundant provision His never-ending love is steadfast and sure The depths of His riches and incredible wisdom Give thanks to God For He is good And give thanks God, for He is good. Oh, give thanks, give thanks to God, for He is good. Give thanks to God, for He is good. God, you're always good. You're always good to me. Yeah, always good. You're always good to me. Yeah, you're always good. You're always good. 
You're always good to me. Oh. And so, Heavenly Father, receive these expressions of thanks from sincere hearts. For, Lord, we have so many reasons to be grateful to you for all that you have done. And throughout this day, Lord, I pray that you would remind us of how your love, your mercy, your grace, and your truth have changed our lives, continually move us to expressions of thanksgiving throughout this day and in the days to come. Jesus, in your precious name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hey everyone, Stephanie here with this weekend's announcements. Before we dive in, a quick reminder that you can find our digital bulletin loaded with more information on our website at rockpoint.ca and our connect card found at rockpoint.ca slash contact or by scanning this QR code is the best way to send in any comments or questions you may have. And now let's get to the announcements. Our own Bill Finnamore is now on his way back to Poland to check in on our Polish church partners. Let's be praying for him as he seeks to support and encourage our brothers and sisters caring for those most affected by the war in Ukraine. On a similar note, the Poland and Ukraine support team is looking to continue supporting our Polish brothers and sisters so they can in turn support Ukrainian refugees. We would like each Rock Point site to partner with a church in Poland to provide prayer and financial support as the need arises. We are looking for Rock Point people of prayer who could meet every other Saturday morning and pray over Zoom with a Polish pastor. If you are interested in this, please check out the bulletin for more information. Ascend is a unique Rock Point gathering that focuses on worship, prayer, and the expression of spiritual gifts in the context of community. This season, we will be gathering on Sunday evenings once a month instead of Fridays, and everyone is welcome. Our next Ascend is October 22nd at Bow Ridge from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Those of you who receive our weekly newsletter may have noticed that it looked a little different this past week. That is because we've merged our weekly bulletin with our weekly devotional into one place. Anyone looking to get signed up and stay in the know can email office at rockpoint.ca or you can sign up on our website. The Rock Point annual general meeting is around the corner on Monday, October 16th. It will be held at our Bow Ridge site from 7 to 9 p.m. This is an important time for all Rock Pointers, so any Rock Pointer who is not a member can come and participate in a non-voting capacity. Our suggestion is to come a little early in order to register and be ready for 7 p.m. And remember that a special financial information meeting will be held at Bow Ridge right before the AGM at 6 p.m. in the Fireside Room. For the past couple of weeks, Ryan and Ron have been speaking on our finances and tithing. This week, we want to highlight a special giving opportunity. Each year, the Alliance Canada has a Jaffrey offering missions focus to help bolster international gospel work. Check out this video where our Alliance president, Darren Herbold, presents the focus of the Jaffrey offering this year. The Jaffrey Offering is an opportunity to partner with and highlight missions in places where Christ isn't yet known. We're raising $500,000 to support our international workers and partner with local organizations in South Asia to make Jesus known by raising up South Asian church planners to reach their communities with the gospel. The need for the gospel in South Asia is massive. 94% are considered unreached. That's over 1.7 billion people who haven't heard of Jesus or read a Bible or have never even met a Christian before. Now, 1.7 billion is a crazy number. It's incomprehensibly large. It's huge. If the average church plant was 35 people, we'd only need to plant 48.5 million churches to reach everyone. And that doesn't even account for population growth. If every single Canadian packed up everything and moved to South Asia to plant a church, there still wouldn't be enough churches to reach everyone with the gospel in South Asia. The population and the work is staggering. So here's the good news. God's already there. He's working. And we have South Asian partners who are already there doing incredible kingdom work. We aren't coming in with our own agenda, but we're coming alongside them and joining what God is already doing by helping them fund this great mission movement. Our local partners run training programs for South Asian leaders that equip them to plant faith communities. They've already planted 40,000 churches and they're on track to plant 100,000 by 2030. Each graduate on an average year plants a church every single year. And so until now, 
Your gifts have enabled our partners to support and train 217 men and women to plant faith communities. And in five years, that's 1,085 new churches that didn't even exist before. Now, can you imagine? That's more than double the amount of aligned churches currently in Canada. But many more churches are needed. And we believe in a God who multiplies meager fish and small loaves to feed everyone and still have leftovers. Will you join us in supporting our South Asian brothers and sisters, prayerfully and financially, to make Jesus known in South Asia through giving to the Jaffrey offering? You can visit our website to sign up and learn more. This is another opportunity to partner with what God is doing in our world through the Alliance. If you feel like this is something God is asking you to participate in, simply designate your giving for the Jaffrey offering. That's all for me today, Rock Point. Have a wonderful week. Hey everyone, we are now about halfway through our series we've called Five Things. If you've missed a sermon here or there, let me catch you up. Our lead staff and elders have sensed God calling Rock Point into five areas of focus for the season we find ourselves in. These include proclaiming the good news, helping those with needs, welcoming new Canadians, equipping God's people, and transforming our neighborhoods. God also gave us a reason for stepping into each of these areas, so that all may know Jesus now, a few weeks ago, Ron clarified that when we say all may know Jesus, we're not just talking about evangelism. This isn't just all may hear about Jesus. It also means that we, who already know Jesus, would know him more, know him deeper, more intimately, that we would grow closer to Jesus as we walk with him into the arenas he is working in. Now, none of these callings are new to Rock Point. It has always been the mission of the church to proclaim the gospel and, and care for those with needs. Nor are these the only things we are going to be doing. But we sense God placing a special importance on these things, especially as we look forward with an eye to what the church should be in our changing culture. For many, myself included, it feels like we've reached an era of such rapid change that it's hard to figure out how to be ourselves in the world. Bree and I are having to figure out how to parent in a culture that is so different from the one that we grew up in. The way I was parented was wonderful, but I, I can't always look back to my childhood for answers that address the needs of today. Technology introduces complications that my mom never had to deal with. Our kids are being told things at school, on television, and in books that, that we wouldn't have dreamed of. And although there are days that I'd love to just move out into the middle of nowhere, and keep my family in a safe little bubble, God has called us to serve and minister here in suburban Calgary. In many ways, it's the same for the church. We've had such a massive cultural change over the last 30 years or so that old methods of spiritual growth and evangelism are losing their effectiveness. Now, I'm, I'm not disparaging any old ways. For many years, the idea of invite your friends to church so they can hear about Jesus worked marvelously. The church was known as a place where people could meet God and it had the respect of the people. The gospel was preached by learned, charismatic pastors and lives were transformed. Jesus and church could be talked about in the public square without ridicule or, or harassment. Now, however, the church is often seen as an unsafe space to those who are outside its walls. It is seen as antiquated, uh, out of touch, or a relic of colonialism and intolerance. For years now, most people, even if invited to church, won't come. They just aren't going to hear about Jesus from a pastor. And if this is true, which I believe it is, then our reliance on paid professional pastors to do all of the sharing Jesus is going to slowly work the North American church into the ground. Now, notice how I didn't say slowly work the church into the ground. There are places around the world where the church is flourishing where spiritual battles are won on a grand scale. 
Jesus wasn't lying when he said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Jesus' big C church cannot be overtaken. Jesus has won the victory. But we have seen throughout history that local churches, local expressions of Christ's church, have all but disappeared for seasons when they haven't been able to deal with oppression or, or changing culture. But it doesn't need to be this way. I have a vision for Rock Point, for the church we could become. And today I want to share this vision with you because it pertains to our scripture passage. I see a church that has come through a season of heartbreak, of confusion and of loss, ready to get to work and change the communities it finds itself in. I see a church that has acknowledged its pain, found healing in the presence of Jesus and has grown closer together than ever before. I see a church where all of its people are active in their communities, bringing hope, meeting needs, and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because they are meeting people around them with love and honesty, every person is seeing people come to know Jesus throughout their everyday conversations. And in doing so, they themselves get to know a little more of Jesus' heart. If the lost are not going to come to church to meet Jesus, then the church is going to go to them. I see worship services where people are able to worship openly, freely, in whatever way that God has created them. They are able to engage with deep truths about God and meet Him in song, in prayer, scripture, and teaching. I see people who are changed in the presence of Jesus, who are healed in the presence of Jesus, who are made alive in the presence of Jesus. Now, does this sound like the rock point of today? In some ways, yeah. Very much yes. Rock Point is the church I was saved in, and I've been here for nearly 14 years because I believe in this body of believers. I believe in who we are and what we're about. Do we still have a lot of growth to get there? Of course we do. And one of the biggest changes that's, that's going to have to happen is we're going to need to move from a pastor-centric ministry to a laity-centric ministry. Through COVID, I noticed something very troubling. In my conversations with people, we would often talk about Rock Point. It's an occupational hazard. <laughs> but instead of Rock Point meeting, or meaning the, the believers who, who gather here, Rock Point had started to mean the pastors and the staff at the church. If Rock Point was doing something, it was because the staff was doing it. If Rock Point ha had reached out to someone, it was because a pastor had picked up the phone. And if a pastor hadn't made that call, it felt like Rock Point hadn't done anything. This broke my heart. And I want everyone to take a second and think about this. In your heart, do you equate Rock Point with her leaders, even subconsciously? If you do, we need to take some time to dig that untruth out, because Rock Point is not her staff. Rock Point is everyone who calls this, cho this church their spiritual home. Rock Point is you, your family, your friends. The staff are just members of Rock Point who have been given roles in the body that require either more time or more authority. Some have been called to be pastoral leaders, but we pastors are co-servants who work alongside everyone else. Servants with a particular calling, which leads us to today's scripture passage. Paul's letter to the Ephesians lays out quite clearly the role of church leaders. Starting in verse 11. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. I wanna quickly run through these roles and, and what they mean. Apostles are those who are sent out to start new initiatives or, or take the word to new places. These may be missionaries or they may be entrepreneurs, they are the visionaries who imagine a movement, movement that, that isn't yet happening, and then they work to get it started. They are the vanguard of the church, following wherever the Spirit leads. The prophets are those who hear from God and speak what they hear to others. Now, this may be in a public ministry or an official office, or it may just be someone in our seats who prays with and, and for people, sharing words or images that they believe God would have for those they're praying with. The evangelists are those who share the good news, 
Some, like Billy Graham, do this full time. Others may just find themselves frequently talking to others about Jesus and what he has done. Pastors are those who shepherd the faithful, helping to look after their spiritual needs. These may be paid staff members or they may be lay people who have a deep desire to see people live strong, healthy spiritual lives. And finally, teachers are those who teach the body about God. This may be preachers, or it could be someone who leads a class or Bible study, or, or someone in our children's or, or youth ministry. Now, notice that in all of these roles, there are going to be both professional, ordained church leaders and lay people who are Jesus' gifts to his church. And he gave them for a very specific purpose, to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. It's not our leader's job to be the driving force of ministry at Rock Point or in Calgary at large. It's not their job to reach everyone in Calgary and Cochrane with the gospel. And it's not even their job to take care of all the spiritual needs of Rock Pointers. Their job is to equip all of us to do these things. But why, you may ask? Isn't this what we pay our pastors for? Well, there are two main reasons why we need to equip everyone to be actively engaged in God's work in the world. And both are simple. And first is easy, because I can't do it alone. I don't have access to everyone in Calgary. It's unlikely that I'll be close to downtown energy CEOs or your kids' parent council members. Really, I'm not likely to proclaim the good news to everyone in Citadel, never mind Calgary. Even in the theater community that I, I serve in, I, I can't be everywhere or know everyone. But if we are all active in bringing the kingdom, to where God has placed us, we'll cover much more ground. You are going to have friends, family, co-workers, gym buddies, or, or grocery store clerks in your life that I will never run into. You have relationships that are strong enough to bear the weight of sharing the good news. You've built trust with people, shared experiences with them, and proven that you are a person who cares for them. <laughs> that makes you the ideal candidate to be an active kingdom agent in their lives. And closer to home, if COVID taught us anything, it's that relying on a few professional pastors to care for the needs of several thousand congregants in a season of social upheaval is a recipe for disaster. Our church culture and structure really wasn't ready for that scale of trauma, and the structure broke. People fell through the cracks. Others felt forgotten or unloved because the pastors couldn't look after everyone. Our pastors were spending their time trying to triage the trauma and deal with the biggest fires. And some of those whom we weren't able to get to left Rock Point. And some left Christ's church altogether. We lost sheep and we weren't able to go and get them because the rest of the flock was still a mess. And this still hurts me. And if you're sitting here today and you are one of the many who felt forgotten and abandoned, I'm sorry. Thank you for staying, even when it was hard. I appreciate your willingness to stick it out and give grace to your leaders. I appreciate that your faith in Jesus was bigger than the weaknesses that were around you. So, our first reason for equipping God's people is our inability to do everything. The second is also simple. God told us to. In verse 12, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. That's pretty clear to me. God's call for the leadership of the church to equip the body for ministry is to continue until we are all so fully mature that we live perfect lives like Jesus did. In other words, we're going to keep doing this until he returns. Now, I know some of you out there are thinking, I'm not an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, so it looks like I'm off the hook this week. And while it's true that this is the primary calling of our church leaders, we are not the only ones called to equip God's people. Let's jump back a bit in Ephesians 4, back to verse 7. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. 
Each and every one of us has been given gifts by Jesus, not just, just those of us with the, the title pastor, not just the people we've decided should be at the church full time, all of us. And he gave us these gifts for a reason. To figure that out, let's, let's look at a few other passages from scripture. Colossians 3.16, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives, teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Or how about Romans 14, 19? So then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. Or Hebrews 10, 24, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Philippians 2, 4, don't look out for your own interests, only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And perhaps most clearly in 1 Peter 4, 10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. That's a whole lot of one another's and each other's. We are to teach, counsel, build up, motivate, take an interest, and serve each other. That sounds a lot like equipping to me. You see, in the same way that the pastors aren't able to actively be ministering to everyone in Calgary, we aren't able to equip everyone for every task that God may assign them. My skill set is limited. I can equip you to tell a great story or to uh, help you get the most out of your Bible reading or, or to talk to your kids about the media they're watching, but I can't teach you how to walk with a spouse suffering from dementia or how to put up drywall for your widowed neighbor or how to translate Bible stories into your kid's new slang. But there are people in this congregation who can. There are so many people in our church that have the skills and talents that you may need to step into whatever arena God is calling you to. People who have set up food banks and book clubs, people who are in the trades or are financial advisors or lawyers or teachers or cooks or stay-at-home parents, people who have spent countless hours learning the skills needed for their vocation. When we look carefully, we all have something to offer. And if we're going to follow Jesus' call to be the church in this new era, we're all going to have to step up and start equipping. And when we do, Paul shows us what the church will look like. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That sounds like a church I want to be a part of, a church where all of its members are secure in the truth of Jesus Christ. A church that is bold in its proclamation of the good news. A church that is growing in Christ-likeness. A church that serves each other in love with the gifts that we have all been given. Now, so far this has all been rather vague as far as application goes. Unless the Holy Spirit has placed something in your heart already, and if he has, amazing, go do that. You might be wondering how you can step into your calling to help equip God's people to do God's work. And to answer that, I want to leave you with three challenges. Depending on where you are in your own spiritual journey. If this is new to you, I challenge you to pray and journal about this every day for a week. Set aside five minutes, whether first thing in the morning or over lunch or, or before you go to bed, and ask God what your next step should be. Write down what comes to mind. It may be from God or it might not be, but it'll be great information for you to sift through later. Maybe you ask God to bring to mind things that that you are good at and, and you jot those down or, or you ask God where he sees a need and you, you take a note or maybe you ask him how you can help equip the body and you'll get a, a word, an image or, or a full-on nightly quest to go on. That's up to God. But once you've been praying for a week or so, I challenge you to talk to someone about what you've been thinking, about what you've written down. Find a trusted friend or a pastor and start to untangle those thoughts. See if together you can come up with a, a place where you can begin to step into your calling to be an equipper of God's people. And next, if you've been on your journey for a while and you're convinced that you should be involved but aren't sure that you have anything to offer, I challenge you to sign up for something. Take Alpha or Emotionally Healthy Spirituality or a Bible study, 
volunteer with the children's ministry or the welcome team, take a class at Ambrose. This, this will give you the opportunity to be equipped for a specific task, which you can then turn around and use to equip others. It will also give you insight into how others are already equipping the body. Both are helpful as we move forward. Finally, if you're ready to go and God's already given you an idea of how he would have you pour into others, I challenge you, go for it. Find someone to mentor. Come talk to one of the staff about leading a new ministry or a class. Gather a group together and dive into a study. As I've said, our role as pastors is not going to be leading every ministry. Instead, we will be supporting those who have a passion for where they see God at work. We will, we will seek to help them and equip them to step into whatever God is calling them to do. I hear over and over again that the reason people aren't talking about Jesus or why they aren't making connections with their neighbors or mentoring the next generation is because they don't feel like they know how to do it. I'm calling all of Rock Point to make this reason obsolete in the next year. If there's something you feel called to but don't feel equipped to do it, reach out. Together, we can find a way to get you equipped. Because ultimately, this isn't about us. It's about God and his glory. Just as grass gives glory to God by being grass and the mountains give glory to God by being mountains, when we become more like the people he created us to be, we give him glory. When we step into his call to equip each other for the work of the kingdom, we give him glory. And when we are active in that work and reach others with the good news and they respond with repentance and believe God is glorified even more. So let's join Jesus in stepping toward Paul's vision of a fully mature church. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit would move in our midst, showing us where to serve and equipping us to equip others. And let's have the boldness and the patience to move at the speed of God in this endeavor. God bless us, Rock Point. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that God has been speaking to you clearly and that you are ready to step into your role as an equipper of God's people. If you have any thoughts that you'd like to share or need help discerning what God is saying to you, please reach out. I'd love to walk with you as you seek God's will. Until next week, you are loved, Rock Point.